Feeding the cow is a balancing act to ensure that you meet her needs in terms of providing minerals, energy, fibre and protein. And that's often done with the aid of computer programmings, taking into account the analysis of feedstuffs. But really, it's the cow that will tell you if what you're providing is satisfying her needs. Adam Clay is the Technical Extension Officer for Dairy Co. Adam, how can farmers ensure that they are doing the job correctly? Yield is always the first indicator of uh, good performance for dairy cows. If yield drops suddenly, then it's normally an indication that something is quite badly wrong with the diet or there's quite a serious health aspect to the animal that needs addressing quite immediately. Milk constituents are the other indications to dairy cow performance, uh, particularly protein and butter fat. Now, to get an idea about how these are performing in the animal, I like to use the Penn State separator. It shows me what the diet is doing in the rumen. It splits it into four different sections, from more fibrous elements of the diet to the concentrated elements of the diet. And it gives me an idea about how the different feeds are interacting with the cow. And it will give me two main indicators. One will be dairy cow uh, intake, dry matter intake, and the other one will be rumen health. Now, from an intake perspective, it's going to be controlled by the amount of structural fibre that's in the diet. And splitting it out in the Penn State separator gives me an idea if there's too much or too little structural fibre. If there's too much on the top level of the sieve, and therefore too much structural fibre, the cow physically can't digest that much fibre in time, and therefore it's going to slow down rumen flow, and it's going to slow down dry matter intake. The other element to it is, is health, rumen health. Now, if there's not enough forage on the top sieve, then the rumen flow will go too quickly, in which case the nutrients won't be broken down and therefore rumen health will be jeopardised. The other element to it that the Penn State shows us is if there's too much concentrate elements on the bottom areas of the sieves. This can lead to excessive breakdown of starch and sugars and acidosis or subclinical acidosis, otherwise known as SARA. Why would cows get acidosis? Acidosis occurs when rumen pH drops down below 5.8 for a significant amount of time. There are two key types of bacteria in the rumen. The fibre digesting bacteria, and they thrive at 6 to 6.8 rumen pH, and the starch and sugar bacteria, which thrive at around about 5.5 pH. Now, ideally, we want rumen bacteria to be level at approximately 6.2 pH. So if it drops down lower than this level, the starch and sugar bacteria thrive, they work very hard, they create a very volatile environment in the rumen, and then acidosis is incurred. And this can lead on to reduced dry matter intakes and therefore reduced milk yield. So the separator you have, though, is not something that, that all producers may have access to, though. Is there another way for producers to do a similar test? Yes, absolutely. Simply a clear bucket of water, um, which you can fill three quarters full and put a handful of your mix in, in that. It doesn't have to be a TMR mix. It can be forage and concentrate. It can be anything that you feed to the cow. Put it into this bucket of water and see how it separates. Ideally, what we're looking for is what we call a rumen mat. It's a level of structural fibre that sits on top of the water, and that's what the cow uses to dictate rumen flow. So, as I mentioned about dry matter intake, but also rumen health, because it, it makes sure that the rumen flow isn't too fast and ensures good nutrient breakdown. Now, you can simply see if there's lots of structural fibre on top of the water, then you've obviously got too much, in which case intakes might be jeopardised. If there's not enough structural fibre on top of the water, then the diet can run straight through the cow very quickly and that's going to jeopardise rumen health. OK, so we've talked about the ingredients of the feed and the importance of different sizes and the structures within the diet. However, it is said that the presentation of feed can have a large effect on the intake. So is there any way that we can assess this? Yes, absolutely. It's very important. I think it's underrated in a lot of dairy herds as well. The uh, actually cow sorting um, is a big problem in mixed, mixed diets. Now, of course, uh, a cow naturally wants to sort. She's habitual. She wants to sort for feed. So it's our job to try and minimise that sorting as much as possible for the main reason that we want consistent feed quality throughout the day. Now, if a cow's sorting, she's rooting through to get the tasty, sweeter ingredients, and that's going to leave her with generally a more forage-based diet at the end of the day, which means she's not having consistent feed throughout the day. So actually uh, monitoring the performance of that diet, looking at the chop length and, length in the diet, and the amount of concentrates that you're feeding can show as to whether or not your cows are sorting. So can this be measured? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the first key way of measuring it is actually monitoring the cow's dung. 
Um, what we're looking for is a, a cow pat that about, stands about an inch high off the floor. It should start to sound like a steady clap as you walk through the shed and not a round of applause. We don't want any loose muck looking around the yard and that's a very good indication to room and health. We're, we're looking for that the feed has been completely broken down in the dung. We're not looking for any undigested feed or long structural um, cuts of fibre in the, in, the, in the dung. We're also looking out for mucus tags as well. If we see mucus tags in the dung, then it can often be an indication of poor rumen function, but also potentially mycotoxins in the diet. So the dung is the one way to, to, to assess it. Another way is cutting rates in your cows as well. Very, very important that you monitor cutting rates because we're looking for a 70 to 80% cutting rates in, the, uh, in your cows at rest. So at any one time, look for 10 cows that are lying down together. Seven or eight of them should be cutting at once. And another, another element is the bite rate for each cud. Look at a cow cudding and count how many chews she takes per cud. It's a really good indication about the fibrous level in the diet. We're looking for 50 to 80 chews per cud. Now, if there's more than 80, if there's 100 or 120, it's generally an indication that there's too much, either too much fibre in the diet or too much structural fibre in the diet. And it's taking the cow too long to chew that down to a rate that she can digest it. The other side of it is that if she's not chewing the cud enough, and if there's less than 50 chews, that's generally an indication that either there's not enough forage in the diet, not enough fibre, or the chop length is too small. In which case, she's not masticating enough, she's not producing enough sodium bicarb and a saliva, and therefore she's not buffering the rumen. So that can lead to acidosis. Of course, the whole aim of this is so the animal maintains her condition throughout lactation and is able to not only produce the milk, but also to get back in calf. Body Condition Score is a tool to measure this, so what would your recommendation be on when to score and what scores we should be looking for at each of these? Fertility is very important to dairy farms' profitability and nutrition is of paramount importance to fertility. Um, the key thing that we're looking for in relation to fertility and nutrition is that after calving it's keeping negative energy balance and the amount of body condition score loss from calving to peak yield to an absolute minimum. Ideally the cows want to lose in the range of up to half a condition score from calving up to peak yield. One condition score is acceptable for very high yielding cows but ideally half condition score. So at calving we want our dairy cows to calve down at, th at condition score three. Now up until peak yield they can drop down to ideally two and a half condition score. Two is acceptable as I said but ideally two and a half. At this point we now need the cow to be putting weight back on again. So about six to eight weeks before the dry period starts we want to be body condition scoring our cows again to make sure they are put on body weight and they are around about 2.75 body condition score at that point. It gives us enough time then to change the management of our lactating cows to make sure we can dry them off at the right condition. And when we dry our, dry our cows off, they should be anywhere between 2.75 and condition score 3. So that during the dry period, they can maintain body weight rather than putting excessive body weight on. And at that point, we should be at calving down at body condition score 3 again. Dairyco have produced a Feeding Plus folder, which is intended as a reference folder for producers and includes topics such as nutrition basics, formulating rations and monitoring performance, plus a look at different feeds and forages. The information Adam has given us today is included in this folder, along with further details on how to assess your feeding regime and body condition score data sheets.